22nd of March, 1665. To Mr. Povey's and with creed to the change and to my house, but it being washing day, dined not at home, but I took him, I being invited, to Mr. Hublands the merchant, where Sir William Petty and abundance of the most ingenious men, owners and freighters of the experiment, now going with their two bodies to see. Most excellent discourse. Among others, Sir William Petty did tell me that in good earnest he hath in his will left such parts of his estate that could invent such and such things, as among others, that could discover truly the way of milk coming into the breasts of a woman. And he that could invent proper characters to express to another the mixture of relishes and tastes. And says to him that he in, and says to him that he who invents gold, he gives nothing for the philosopher's stone. For, says he, they that find out that will be able to pay themselves. But, says he, by this means it is better to give, better than to give a lecture. For here my executors that must part with this will be sure to be well convinced of the invention before they do part with their money. Then to Gresham College, and there did see a kitlin killed almost quite, but that we could not quite kill her with sucking away the air out of a receiver wherein she was put, and then the air being let in upon her revives her immediately. Nay, and this air is to be made by putting together a liqueur and some body that, that firmaments the steam of that doth do the work. Thence home and thence to Whitehall where the house was full of Duke's going tomorrow and thence to St James wherein these things fell out. One, I saw the Duke, kissed his hand and his most kind expressions of his value and opinion of me, which comforted me above all things in the world. Two, the like from Mr. Coventry, most heartily and affectionately. Three, saw, among other fine ladies, Mrs. Middleton. A very great beauty I never knew or heard of before. Four, I saw Waller the poet, whom I never saw before. So, very late, by coach home with William Penn, who was there, to supper and to bed. With my heart at rest, rest and my head very busy, thinking of my several matters now on foot, the new comfort of my old navy business and the new one of my employment on Tangier. 23rd of March, 1665. Up and to my Lord Sandwich, who follows the Duke this day by water down to the Hope, where the Prince lies. He received me, busy as he was, with mighty kindness and joy at my promotions, telling me most largely how the Duke hath expressed on all occasions his good opinions of my service and love for me. I paid my thanks and acknowledgement to him, and so back home. 27th of March, 1665. Up betimes to Mr. Povey's, and there did sign and seal my agreement with him about my place of being treasurer for Tangier. It being the greatest part of it, drawn out of the draft of his own drawing up, only I have added something here, and there in favour of myself. Thence to the Duke of Albemarle. The first time that the officers of the Navy had waited upon him since the Duke of York's going, who hath deputed him to be Admiral in his absence, and I find him a quiet, heavy man that will help business when he can hinder nothing, and am very well pleased with our attendance on him. I'll be sharing more.
in the coming days. Our next chapter will be April. And this is where things begin to start to get interesting in the period of 1665. So I hope that this has either uh, helped you bust your boredom or helped you drift off into um, the hallowed steps of Bedfordshire. Uh, in the meantime, please do look after yourselves and um, best wishes to everyone in London, Britain and around the world. From me, the London Storyteller, take care. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to add your comments, like and subscribe. Cheerio!